my Christmas tree is up. I put it up yesterday. My mum and my sister came over and helped me decorate for Christmas. So my flat is all festive and ready for the festive season. We are nearly at December 1st. I'm obviously filming these a little bit in advance. So we're nearly at December 1st, nearly at advent calendar opening season. I haven't been feeling too festive yet, to be honest. I've been struggling to get into the festive spirit a little bit. And I think that there's often a lot of pressure around us to feel festive earlier, but actually, you know, if you don't feel festive in November, that's okay. It's also okay if you don't feel festive in December as well. But like, I normally start feeling festive around this time of the year and I haven't yet. So I'm like, please arrive festive feeling, but I'm hoping having my decorations up will help with that. Today's Vlogmas video is just a little daily vlog. It is a Monday, I am working my day job today, but I also have a couple of other bits I need to do. I'm doing Patreon sprints later, and I maybe wanna try and finish this book, possibly. Might be overkill, but I'm gonna give it a go. This is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Divine Rivals is a historical fantasy following two different characters who have an enemies to lovers slow burn romance vibe about them. They are both writers for the same paper and they both want to be war correspondents to be able to go off to war and write on what is happening on the front line. This war is a fantasy war of the gods that people are fighting in. This is very much World War inspired. I don't know if it's meant to be inspired by World War One or World War Two, but it's definitely got that kind of way about it. And we are following our main character who is trying to get a job working as a war correspondent rather than just being a writer who writes obituaries and things like that. And her rival writer who is also going up against her for the same job. And everything that transpires after that. Our main character, she's a writer and she's called Iris. In the film The Holiday, there's a writer and she's called Iris. So as far as I'm concerned, this this is now a holiday retelling. I will take no further questions on this. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if Jude Law showed up. Just saying. It actually has nothing to do with the holiday other than the fact that there's writers and one of them's called Iris, but you know. I've got Christmas on my brain clearly right now. So this is the book I'm gonna maybe try and finish today. I don't know why I'm putting that into the ether, but I am. This is my progress in this book. I have got around 200 pages left. I finish work at 4.30. After that, I intend to just sit and read as much of this as I can around preparing food and existing as a human. This is my task for the day. <laughs> I do actually have one other task for the day other than all the other things I have to do. There's many things I have to do today, but let me show you this one. <laughs> so I got this Hobbiton sign at Comic-Con a few weeks ago and I bought it to put here. And I keep putting off doing that. So I need to do that. <laughs> making holes in my wall stresses me out, especially like trying to work out the logic in my brain of making sure that it's straight. And I know I probably could put some kind of tape, like command tape stuff on it, but I think that, I, I know I want it there. I just need to measure it all. And I think that nails is gonna be fine. So I need to do that. And I've decided that if I put it in a video and say I need to do it, that holds me accountable. So I actually end up doing it. So this is also, on my list. Maybe we should just do that now because it's literally going to take me minutes. I'm just being, I'm procrastinating. I'm procrastinating. <laughs> I've got this pencil <laughs> that I'm going to use to mark the wall and it says it's an emergency stake from Mina and the Slayers, which is a fantastic book in the Mina and the Undead series by Amy McCaw. Really good fun if you want something vampire-y set in New Orleans. So when I use this to make my, my marks, I don't really know where I want it exactly. This is the pressure. This is the pressure that I don't like is trying to pick where to put the damn thing. That's a lie. Apparently that's what my spirit level thinks is straight. I mean, is it? I hate doing this. This is so stressful. <laughs> that does not look straight to me. Maybe it is straight. Is it? Is it straight? <laughs> Maybe that's straight. Okay, let's make new dots. Oh no, I broke the end of the pencil. Why am I allowed to do things like this? Oh no, I don't know which one's the new dots. <laughs> I once had worker people over at my house and they needed something that they didn't have. And I was like, oh, well, I've got my toolbox. Do you want to see if I've got anything that would work? And it was two men. <laughs> and they looked at me, were like, oh my God, you've got a toolbox? I'm like, yes. Why is that shocking to you? They're like, oh, we just didn't expect you to have a toolbox. I'm like, okay, why is that exactly? And they're like, oh, no reason. I'm like, okay, cool, right. I have a toolbox. I have wall plugs and screws and nails and I, whatever this is. I have these things and this is really useful. I also have a hammer because I live alone and I need to put things up on walls, wonky. <laughs> Oh, 
this thing, this little spirit level pen. I don't even know where I got this. Is this like a Waterstones purchase? I have no idea. Such a good idea. I have no need for a giant spirit level. It's Diddy. I can keep it in a pen pot and it's just, it's just helpful. <laughs> it looks so cute. Also, <laughs> this is huge. I'm so excited to open this. I think it's straight. That's kind of throwing it off. I think it's straight. I'm having that. I'm having it. I think it looks good. It's cute. Look how cute and cosy my Christmas tree looks. I've got my Christmassy ASMR room on. I've got my Udi. I've got my cosy setup. I'm gonna sit right there and read as much of Divine Rivals as I can tonight. I'm really gonna try and finish this book. I really am, but I don't know if that's overly ambitious or not. So we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a digital detox tonight as well and not really go on my phone. I am on Patreon sprints, so I can't really completely avoid technology and I'm also vlogging and I have an ASMR room on my TV. So really a phone detox is what I'm trying to do. I just feel like I really lean on my phone a lot as just, I don't really even know, I just pick it up out of habit and just doom scroll. So I wanna stop doing that as where I can. And I know I'm probably not gonna be able to eradicate it completely, but I wanna help myself not feel like I'm on it all the time and just pick up a book instead. Cause I'm not gonna be able to finish this book if I don't actually pick it up and I have about 200 pages left and it's currently like six in the evening so I really need to actually start reading it but the work day is done all I have to do now is just read and be on Patreon sprints it's book time now let's see how much progress I can make <laughs> So I've reached the page 200 mark, which is actually fairly decent progress. I've got under halfway left to go and I'm really enjoying this. I'm glad that I am because so many people told me they thought I would, that I was worried that the hype would get to me and would stop me enjoying it because I would overthink my own enjoyment, which is so silly, but it happens. The hype can get to me, but this is good. It's really good. I like the fact that we've got this fantasy war setting. I think that's really interesting and isn't something that I've read about before in the way that it's based kind of on a world war. I'm still not really sure if it's meant to be based on World War One or World War Two, or just a kind of accumulation of both of them. The romance, we're gonna talk about that for a sec because I don't really enjoy romance in books necessarily. I don't actively not enjoy it, but it is certainly not something that I go out of my way to look for. The romance in this says it's enemies to lovers. Where does it say that? It says it somewhere <laughs> in the blurb. It says it's an epic enemies to lovers fantasy novel. Now I'm gonna throw it out there that I don't think it's enemies to lovers. I mean, I can't speak for the lovers part yet, but I feel like they're, they're kind of more irritated by each other, vaguely annoyed by each other than they are enemies. I feel like enemies really implies a real passionate hatred. And I think actually now I'm thinking about it a lot of the time that you have enemies to lovers books, how often is it really enemies to lovers versus we just vaguely annoy each other and that's kind of what we're basing a lot of this on because I feel like that is definitely the vibe in this more than anything else. Saying that, I am really enjoying seeing this kind of blossom between these two characters and the way that it's blossoming. I have a feeling we're heading towards a big like misunderstanding type of plot line, which I think is some of my like least favorite tropes when you have that kind of, oh my God, how could you do this to me? How can you tell me this all along? A kind of storyline that I find pretty annoying, but I, I think that might be possibly the way that this is going. I know that this is a series. I don't know if it's a duology or more than that, but it's definitely more more than one book so that kind of leaves things open into book two so I'm not really sure how we're gonna see this book develop. Really enjoy the characters that we're meeting in the town that our main character is stationed in to be a war correspondent. I'm really enjoying seeing that side of things and I think since we got there it certainly picked up the pace a lot more. I think the first 100 pages for me were a little bit slow and we were just meeting our character, setting them up as a writer and what their motivations were and what they wanted and seeing the relationship between these two start off as competitive writers. I'm saying these two because I keep forgetting what the other guy's name is. Is it Rowan? Roman, Roman. I wrote a blog post years and years and years ago about how so many love interests in books names start with R. And this just feeds into that some more, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, Roman, Roman and Iris. They, yeah, to start with, I think we were very much just kind of getting the introduction and building that up, but I felt like it was a touch slow. And I think that's probably, why I didn't really jump into it as much as I have today alone because now the pace has got going. Now I feel like I just want to devour the whole thing in one sitting. So that is what I'm going to try and do. I've actually just reached chapter 28, which is called A Divine Rival. So we've got the book name in the chapter title, which is very satisfying. So I'm going to get back to reading. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't read a whole lot of war novels very often because they just make me sad. And this, oh, ah, it's packing a punch. It's packing a punch. Also tension and just, uh, I feel invested. I have like just under a hundred pages left. Just under a hundred pages left, I think. And I'm just like clinging on for dear life, hoping that everyone's okay. Basically at this point, that's my current overriding emotion for this book. I only have 40 pages left of this book, which means I am actually gonna finish it tonight. And I'm honestly kind of surprised at myself. I know I said that I wanted to achieve that today, but I didn't necessarily think I would, but I, I think I will. So I'm looking forward to, and I'm scared for that because I feel like this is going to end on a cliffhanger. I know it's a duology. We don't have book two out yet at the moment. And I just feel like it's gonna leave me needing that desperately because of the events that we've currently escalated to and I just don't feel like the book can be summarised before the end. I feel like it's definitely going to leave me needing book two and I don't know how ready I am for that because I do feel incredibly invested in this now. I think the pacing has really picked up and I think that's really helped to move the story along and I feel really invested in the characters. Also, we've been introduced to a cat. We've just literally met this cat. It's been given a name and I just don't know why authors do this to me. I, I can't deal with these innocent animals coming along and just, I now all I care about is the cat and the cat's well-being and making sure the cat's okay. And I just met this damn cat. So thanks so much for that, Rebecca Ross. Also, inanimate objects. <laughs> Typewriters are quite central to the plot of this and mean a lot to the characters. And I'm now also incredibly worried about these typewriters. <laughs> and somehow worried that they're gonna get forgotten or lost or destroyed. It's something like that I'm just worried is gonna happen to the typewriters. And I get like this a lot with inanimate objects, whether it's like a possession that means a lot to somebody, whether it's an item of clothing, a bit of jewelry, a cuddly toy. I just feel like I get overly invested in things like this and I'm always worried about where these specific things are when reading or watching anything like that. That is always where my concern goes. I'm always thinking, where is that thing? Where is that thing? And like, as soon as someone's got like a special locket or something, I'm just like, what is happening to that? And I just, this book is no exception, okay? This book is no exception. I know that I probably should be more concerned about the characters right now, and I am concerned about the characters, but I'm just also concerned by the cat and the typewriters. So that's where I'm currently at. I'm going to go and finish the last 40 pages of this book, and I will let you know my final thoughts when, when I've done just that. Oh God, one of the soldiers is calling for their mom. Oh. It just feels so raw, the way it's written. Really beautiful writing style, but like really raw and emotional. <sighs> I have finished Divine Rivals. <laughs> this book took me on a journey. It really did take me on a journey. I feel like I've very much intensely fallen into this in the last 24 hours. I started it last Thursday. I didn't really read too much of it until last night and then today. And I've just fallen head first and fallen in love with Rebecca Ross's writing style for this book. Rebecca Ross has not only captured the sadness and the rawness of this war and the effects on the area and the people that it's having, but it's she's also done a fantastic job of capturing the beauty in these pages and the poetic moments along the journey that these characters go on. Whilst this is a fantasy and the war is set around these two gods, I felt like I had more questions about the fantasy system and I wanted more from it. I think that it didn't necessarily go into it in as much detail as I was hoping that we would get about this fantasy world. I wanted to know more about the magic system and I wanted to see more of the magic system and I'm hoping that's something that we see more of in book two. I definitely need book two and I think it comes out next month or in January. I'm not, well actually next month is January by the time you're watching this, isn't it? It comes out December, January time. I can't remember exactly when in the UK, but I'm very much looking forward to the sequel now. I, I need it. The end was intense since I last spoke to you. I mean, I've pretty much given you my thoughts and feelings as I have gone through reading this and those very much still 
all stand. I really loved all the characters. I think that they were created really well. And as we learned more and more about them, I just fell more and more in love with them. And I felt very invested in their personal stories as well as their stories as a collective group. And I love that we kind of have this found family going on and this immediate comfort that we have alongside those characters. I think the atmosphere and the setting felt both bleak and beautiful and I love the fact that whilst there was this war happening the characters could find beauty in these little solitary moments and just find those moments where they can and where they needed to. I think that it was beautifully balanced with those moments alongside the big action epic moments and it just kept me completely hooked and kept me excited to read more and also very much emotionally invested. There were several points in this book where I felt incredibly emotionally invested, not only in cats and typewriters, but also in the characters as well. I had a really good time reading this and I'm really glad that I enjoyed it as much as I did. I've given it four out of five stars. It wasn't quite breaching into five star territory for, for me. I think because the start did feel slower and I felt like maybe could have been a little bit quicker in pacing and still had the same effect with teaching us about the characters and establishing everything. I, that, I think that's where it partially lost a little bit to get into that five star territory but I still really loved it. I I had a good time with it and I'm excited for book two. Before I get ready for bed and just wind down for the evening I need to pick my next read and I'm honestly not sure what to go with so let's have a look at my shelves. First pick is The Lost Bookshop by E.B. Woods. This is our Patreon book club pick for November December. Obviously in December now so I definitely need to read this one very soon so this is option number one. Clara and the Sun is on my December TBR. I would like to try and get to this one this month if I can so I think we'll put that on the maybe pile. Also I have The Christmas Appeal which obviously very festive. It's quite sure I really enjoyed The Appeal by Janice Hallett so I think I'm gonna enjoy this one. So again, that one's going on the pile. When I don't have a specific book I need to read for a specific video, my brain just becomes overwhelmed with choice, which is definitely a very privileged position to be in. And I completely understand that. I'm very grateful to have so many books to pick from, but it does mean that when I, when I do come to pick a book without a specific video guiding me, I just don't know what to pick. So we're gonna to decide together. <laughs> The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett to start with is a mixed media thriller, is, is all I can tell you from what I know of the appeal. The tagline says, one dead Santa, a town full of suspects, will you discover the truth? So it sounds like it wants me to help it figure out what's happening. I almost want to save this one till a little bit closer to Christmas, but I don't want to save it too close that I just don't get to it at all. But you know, that's in that's in for the running. Then we've got Clara and the Sun by Kasuyu Ishiguro. This one, the bottom of the blurb says, uh, this, in Clara and the Sun, Kasuyu Ishiguro looks at our rapidly changing world through the eyes of an unforgettable narrator to explore a fundamental question, what does it mean to love? The narrator is an artificial friend and I just feel like this one's gonna be emotional. I just feel like it is. So we've got that one as well that's also on my December TBR. And then we have The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods which is a book about books with the tagline on a quiet street in Dublin, a lost bookshop is waiting to be found. And I just think it sounds pretty magical to be honest. I know a lot of my patrons have been really enjoying this one and have, have said that once it gets going they can't really put it down. On the front it says how far will you go to find your story? I feel like it has to be this one, to be honest. I did want to save this one to read again a little bit closer to Christmas. It doesn't feel like it's a particularly Christmassy book, but I love the enchanting magic about it. And I feel like that is the thing that makes it feel Christmassy for me. But actually, I think it might be the time for this one. I think I'm gonna go for this. We're on the floor in front of my kitchen because this is pretty much the only place I can find like good lighting at night in my flat that doesn't look horrendous and doesn't, really lower the camera quality so we're on the floor in front of the kitchen. Hi. <laughs> I'm gonna go read this book in bed for like five minutes before I completely fall asleep but if you would like to see me read this for more than five minutes I will be reading it in my next vlog which I will be filming tomorrow for the rest of the week. I'm gonna be going to London. There's gonna be a Christmassy trip to London. I'm going to Bath I think as well, potentially Christmas trip to Bath. I'm gonna be reading this. I'm gonna be hopefully finishing the audiobook for Iron Flame because I've been listening to that for far too long now so I want to finish that as well. That's pretty much everything you've got to look forward to. I'm saying the next vlog. I don't actually remember the day it's going live, but I'm doing a video every other day for Vlogmas, as you will have probably discovered by now. And it's definitely one of those that's coming soon. So you should look out for that because I think it's going to be fun. But for now, 
I'm gonna go read this book in bed. Thank you for coming along with me on this random choice of a day to vlog. I don't really know why I picked today, but we did achieve the goal we set out to achieve. I finished Divine Rivals. I'm happy. It was a good book. I'm gonna start another book now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons for your constant support. It means the absolute world to me and I couldn't do all of this without you. So thank you so, so much. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.